Max here from ShopSolarKits.com. Today's video, we're gonna be cutting and crimping our own battery cables for these two batteries here. I'm gonna use tools that everybody has at home. This is the cheapest kind of DIY way to do it. So let's get to it. If you have thicker battery cabling and you're gonna need uh, much bigger lugs to go with that, you're gonna need an actual crimping tool. So I'll link to what that looks like. But for a smaller battery bank, and if you have smaller cabling, one set of pliers, a set of scissors, this is really all you need. And then we'll use the heat shrink so all you need is a lighter. So really this is as simple as you can get, pliers, scissors, and a lighter, and we'll make our battery cabling work. So let's get to that now. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to know where you're gonna put your batteries. In an RV, there's generally a battery tray or a battery place where you can set them down. I'm gonna to link to a video here that we made on how to connect your battery bank in series or in parallel. So once your batteries are in place, let's say this is their final resting place in my, for my application, then you're gonna to need to measure the distance in between the terminals. So for example, we'll take like this cabling here, I would need it this long, and you can put a little bit of play into it. So let's say this, this is where I need to uh, have my other lug be. Quite simply, all you do is take my scissors, and boom, I now have cut my, my battery cable to length, and now it's time to put the lugs on. We've already measured out our positive to positive, so now we'll do the same thing for the negative. Once you know the distance, we now have two pieces, one which will go negative to negative, one which will go positive to positive. It's time to put the lugs and the heat shrink on now. So now what we need to do is strip off some of the insulation here so that we can get the lug on because the lug doesn't fit on it like this. You can see that this wiring is pure copper. If there's any place you really shouldn't skimp out on a solar application, it's your wiring. Always go with pure copper wiring. So the way that I like to do this is to put my lug on the table like this and I see approximately how far I need insulation cut. It doesn't need to be a perfect science because we're gonna get the heat shrink on after this. So I always like to do that. Now I know approximately where it needs to go. And it's a simple process of slowly cutting around like this. You can see I've cut it all the way through and lifts right off. So now that we have the insulation off, I always twist it like this a little bit so that it goes in easier. Put my lug right over top. Now it's the easy part. Your large pliers, I hold my one finger on the top here, place it like this, and you start to squeeze. And there you go lug is on there properly. The next part of the kit is applying heat shrink. Heat shrink essentially just protection against, you know, abrasion and damage. What you're going to want to do is the same kind of thing. Measure it out approximately how far down you're going to want it. About an inch down past the lug is what I like to do. So I'll just go like this. Snap it there, complete my cut, and then you can see your heat shrink here. But now you'll open it up, slide this in, put it right up against like this. You can see that it's large and it's not contracted yet. This is where your lighter comes in. Literally the word heat shrink is very self-explanatory. You use heat to shrink this plastic around it. As you can see now, this is heat wrapped and shrinked around this. It should protect against abrasion or other damages. I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the other pieces, um, on all these, and then we'll test to see if the battery cables work when we try to connect our batteries in parallel.
So now that we've created our battery cables, we're going to connect our batteries together, we're going to connect them in parallel, and then we're going to test to see if the batteries or cables are working with our voltage meter here. Since we're connecting them in parallel, and these are 12 volt batteries, we should see 12 volts registering on the voltmeter. So now that we have our battery bank wired in parallel, we should just be able to test it and get around 12 volts depending on the state of charge of these batteries uh, if we've done it correctly and our battery cables are working. Registering 12.86 volts. So that's been how to make your own battery cables. Uh, all you'll need is a, a lighter, some scissors, and a pair of pliers. Uh, if you have thicker battery cables and you're going to make a much bigger battery bank, you will probably want to invest in a proper wire stripper and you'll want to invest in a proper, proper crimping tools. Um, but for the DIY or a small battery bank, this is going to be perfect. This is super cheap. Everybody should have these things at home. And yeah, that's how you make your battery cable. So if you have any questions or concerns, reach out to us. I'll link uh, a bunch of information in the description and we can go from there.